Hey, what's up guys? Matt here from Loon Outdoors and today we're back with another tailgate talks. We're talking about uh, something super fun. It's like, to me, it's half adventure, half fly fishing uh, and a quarter bird watching. And the math totally makes sense. Um, anyways, today we're talking about walk and wade trips. And for me, uh, here in Northern California, it's one of my favorite ways to kind of just get out, put four miles, three miles, whatever you can do in a day, um, hiking up a stream, checking stuff out, kind of leapfrogging, looking for that 10% water that actually holds fish. Um, so down and dirty, we're just going to kind of talk about uh, just the basics of stuff that you should have or may want. Um, first and foremost, super obvious. Uh, fly rod and reel um, little nine foot five weight click paw drag reel whatever you want um, it's going to get the job done for you um, one of the most important things for me though is uh, is kind of in the footwear department so i like a, a a boot that doesn't absorb a ton of water again i'm hiking i'm in and out of the water um, i want something a little bit uh, for me personally flexible uh, lightweight and uh, gets me through the day um, I do like traction devices, so I run aluminum because most of my buddies who run aluminum drift boats cover it with plastic so they actually don't stick to rocks. It was kind of the testament enough for me. Um, I run a gravel guard, um, and this is just a little basic gravel guard that goes inside of your wading boots um, so you can get wet and kind of cruise through the river. Um, that's uh, pretty pretty simplistic stuff. Um, I also rock a pair of really ultralight, packable, breathable waders. Now, the reason for these is here in Northern California, we have an abundance of poison oak, and I do not like itching for five days, or however long it lasts. So if I'm going to a spot that's just super laden with poison oak, and I'm gonna be kind of smashing through it, and I know there's no option, I'll wader up. Also, if it starts to get a little bit cooler out then i'll run waders and maybe like a base layer underneath um big thing is is a net i don't care what style net that you bring i prefer something with a longer handle so i can reach out and capture said fish a little bit quicker and limit my fighting time with them um i bring a really simplistic pack i go with the uh, keep it simple stupid or kiss methodology on this simplistic pack i run a waterproof pack um if I run a waterproof pack, everything inside of it's typically safe. Um, and I don't have to worry about wading too deep or crossing a stream, maybe even swimming across or just kind of cruising across something to get further up river. Um, so inside of the pack, I do keep some strange, weird, different stuff that most people don't probably have. Um, I have a monocular. Uh, this is a cool little uh, like eight by 32 monocular. And I love it because a lot of times I'll be chilling out, taking a break maybe there's some birds or an animal or something off in the distance I want to take a look at it or I can see what the guy's hooking up on you know two runs down without having to ask him um, as far as fly boxes go I'm typically pretty dialed as far as my hatches for my local streams and if you're not I bring uh, I just recommend bringing like your four key boxes I have like a mayfly box like an attractor box my jig nymph box and then I also bring uh, like a midge box as well so other stuff that's pretty basic, um, you know, tippet and leader. Obviously you're gonna be using it out there. Um, some weights, I just run an assortment uh, pack. This is the eight divider kit. You can run them in black or camo, it's totally fine. Um, I bring fly dip because it covers everything from floating yarn style indicators to CDC dry flies if I'm looking at fish rising on a scene. Uh, I do bring a little bit of a bio strike. It's a great way to make a size perfect indicator system for the day. Um, and it's reusable, so I don't stress out too much. Um, sun protection, obviously you're gonna be out there. It's like right now it's 110 degrees here. The sun's beating down on us. If you don't have like a sun shirt or sun hoodie, um, bring some suntan lotion. I carry a pair of sun gloves that they use uh, for flats fishing just so I don't smell like a coconut beach party all day. Um, and one of the other keys that I always have in every single pack and I probably 
have headlamps in every vehicle that I own. Um, it's just a headlamp. Put it on, walk out, low light rigging, stuff like that. Uh, nippers are missing right now. That's very interesting. Um, but I also carry a backup, uh, and I always carry a hemostat or, you know, forcep, whatever you want to call it. Um, they have to do more than one thing. So it has an eye cleaner, a line cutter, and a crimping portion. So that's kind of uh, my main game there. Um, outside of that, this isn't the water bottle that I would bring. Um, it's just hot out today and I need water. Um, so I'd bring a water bottle, something that sits in my pouch, you know, on the side of my pack. But outside of that, guys, that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of doing a walk and away trip. Stop into your local fly shop, ask them what bugs are hatching, what's going on for that area, and then tailor your kit to that. You know, throw some snacks in here, some water, and get out there and just go on a cool hike and explore. Hopefully you guys can get on the water soon. Again, this is Matt. Thanks for watching Tailgate Talks, and we'll catch you next time. GoPro, stop recording.